Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today we have one of our first third gen Threadripper benchmarks, new 300 and 400 series motherboards, and Apple is buying a part of Intel? But first, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as Mass Drop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, so what are you waiting for? Start saving now by visiting the link in the description below. Okay. It's news time, and starting things off, we have one of our first benchmarks on what's almost certainly AMD's Threadripper 3000 series. Remember that during a recent interview with AMD CEO, Lisa Su made it clear that Threadripper, AMD's HEDT CPUs, haven't been done away with, leaving everyone to believe that we can expect the 7 nanometers Zen 2 powered chips before too long. And this is just a few days after the story I covered that said AMD would be releasing 3rd gen Threadripper in October to counter Intel's upcoming HEDT processors. The benchmark was found by none other than Tom Apisac and comes from user benchmark. As far as why I think it's Threadripper, there's actually a few reasons. For one, it uses codename Whitehaven for the motherboard, which should be AMD's enthusiast chipset. Also, the memory latency is quite similar to second gen Threadripper. It has eight memory slots, so it should at least be an X399 board. The release date is Q3 of 2019 and its specs, which I'll go over right now. Starting things off, the CPU is a 16-core, 32-thread chip with the designation, well, this. It comes with a base clock of 3.6GHz and an average boost of 4.05. As far as performance, it gets about what you'd expect given its clocks and cores. When compared with AMD's 2nd Gen 16-core Threadripper 2950X, the new chip beats it in single-threaded performance by 11% and in multi-threaded workloads by 18%. Now, obviously this may not be the final build, but given the clocks, we could see AMD's 16-core Threadripper as being around the same clocks as AMD's upcoming Ryzen 3950X, but while offering more PCI Express lanes, quad-channel memory support, etc, etc. With that said, there's a chance that it could offer better headroom for higher overclocks. Who knows, really? It's just great to see AMD tee up to meet Intel in the high-end race. Next up for today, if you've been thinking about building a Ryzen 3000 PC, but the new X570 boards are just too expensive, this story is for you. Today, MSI announced a slew of new-ish 300 and 400 series motherboards. I say ish because it's basically just a relaunch of certain boards that come with support for 3rd gen Ryzen out of the box. The board names now end with Max, so you know what you've got. What's interesting is that they even include an A320 board, to which I have seen recently that some of them did get Ryzen 3000 support. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing depending on the price, though I will say that in their press release they mention more memory support, but from my testing that's only really dependent on your CPU. With the B450 that I will say was loaned to me by a user in the GamerMail Discord channel, so thanks for that. Anyway, it could get some pretty high clocks, so I doubt there's anything that they really do different here. Just the ability for 3rd Gen Ryzen to separate the Infinity Fabric from the memory clock. Oh, and if you don't want to get one of MSI's new boards, like 2nd Gen Ryzen, AMD is offering a loaner to update your BIOS for the new chips. Definitely a great job, AMD. Lastly for today, it looks like Apple is planning to buy a part of Intel's business. In a report originally shared by the Wall Street Journal, but picked up by quite a bit more outlets, which thank God, because I don't want to pay for yet another subscription. Anyway, Apple is apparently in talks with Intel about acquiring their 5G modem division. As CNBC points out, Tim Cook has made it pretty well known that they like to make their own tech, and after a recent settlement with Qualcomm, the company agreed to buy their chipset for quite a few years. Basically, this is likely a way for Apple to become more independent when the agreement is up. The acquisition is reportedly for $1 billion and would give Apple all of Intel's modem division, including their staff and patents. Really, maybe this money will help Intel get to the fabled 10 nanometers before 2030. Fingers crossed. Uh, I'm, I'm just kidding. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for next-gen Threadripper, or are you just happy about cheaper Ryzen 3000 compatible boards? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. It really helps me out. And as always, have a great day.